Hey, writers, it's Megan Barnhard, and I'm coming at you live from the Write with Megan Facebook page, and I'm going to get a shared in the Write with Megan Facebook group. If you are not already a member over there, come on over and join us. It's um, at Facebook groups. Just search for Write with Megan. Um, it's a place for writers of all shapes, sizes, and stripes to hang out. We have hobbyists. We have professional authors. We have people who are becoming professional authors. We have people writing for business. And it's a place where you can ask questions about writing, get my tips and insights, and um, generally just connect and network with other writers. It's a cool spot to be. So if you're not already there, do come and join us. Today, I am sharing tips about how to make more time for writing. And I know this is something that a lot of writers struggle with. You want to be writing more, but there just doesn't seem to be time. So um, let me know if you're watching live or if you're watching the recording. Um, do you feel like you have enough time to write? To write? Do you feel like you're always short on time? Um, let me know what, what happens with you and writing and time. How does that combination of ingredients work out? Hey, Kate, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Hey, Anne, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, I know I'm coming at you all at a different time today, so I hope you, I hope you caught me. Um, Time is a finite resource, right? It's so hard when we talk about making more time for anything because there isn't any more time than the 24 hours that are in the day. So I'm gonna be sharing tips today that help you feel like you have more time for writing, even if you're not able to actually make more hours in the day. Um, Anne says, short on time. Um, so I, I have often felt that, you know, that writing will get kind of just pushed after everything else. There are all these things we have to take care of in life. Um, <laughs> hey, Marina says, Marina says the, the back reminds you of the time tunnel show. I know, right? I'm traveling in space and time. <laughs> um, we do need more time. We absolutely do need more time. I agree, Anne. But what if you could make more of the writing time you already have? That's what I want to talk you through. My advice for getting more time to write has nothing to do with quitting your job or leaving your family to fend for themselves. The tips I'm gonna give you today are all about how to work with the time you have and get more done in it. So um, I'm going to take you through uh, three and a half, maybe four <laughs> tips. We'll see how separate these feel. Okay, the very first one is the most important one in my book. And it may be something that you've already done. You're like, yeah, Megan, of course, I've already, you know, obvious. And it may be something that you, has never occurred to you. Um, the first thing that I recommend you do is you figure out your writing profile. Some of us are, you know, like weekend warriors and we can set aside three or four hours and really get a lot done and be focused in that time. Some people can take 15 minutes and get a ton done. And there are, you know, every, there's everything in between. So if you know how you can be your most productive, that's a really good place to start. Now, I go into a lot of detail and I outline um, several different writing profiles, drafting profiles in the new book I have coming out, Recipe for Drafting, and I'll tell you how you can get your hands on that in a minute. But just as an example, let me take you through a few. Okay, so some people are really, really excited about goals. I'm one of them, like checking things off of a check checklist to me is the most fun ever, okay? If that's true for you, you can incorporate that into your writing life. And that means you can set word count goals or you can set content goals. And all of a sudden there's a little bit more fire behind your, you know, your, um, when you sit down to write, there's a little bit more fire there, right? You're going to get more done because it's connected to, I get to check this off my checklist. Maybe you're not a checklist person, but if you really work well with specific concrete goals, again, whether that's a word count or it's, I'm going to get this scene done or, um, you know, this part of a scene done, think about that. So, you know, that's one type of writing profile. And if that resonates with you, awesome. If not, um, you know, maybe you are a routine rock star. You're like, if I can do something every day at the same time or even just every weekday at the same time, I know I'll do that. Um, for me, that is yoga. Every, you know, weekday I get up at the same time and I do a different yoga video, but that it's easy to do that because I know that's just my time, right? So if you're somebody who really thrives on habits, then 
you know, think about having your writing time be at the same time so you get into a routine. Saves you time because you're not sitting there thinking, should I write now? Is that a good idea? You're not making the decision. Um, let me know. Give me an emoji. Um, are you starting to see how you could get more out of your time if you know the way you work? And also let me know, um, either of those resonate with you? Do you feel like maybe you're a goal digger or are you a routine rock star? And again, I cover a number of different writing profiles um, in the book Recipe for Drafting, but I'd love to hear some of what works for you. Anne says, I love writing at night. Oh, nice. So if that's when you get energized, and especially if you are working a job that takes your time during the day, and you can set aside that time to write, then um, you're going to be more productive during that time, right? So this first step is, how do I do my best writing? And I walked you through kind of, you know, approaches, like what are you, what kind of goal are you going to set? Or is it going to be more about a habit or routine? And brings up a great point too, though, about time. When are you going to do that writing? Is it first thing in the morning and your head is clear or, you know, while your um, uh, kids are napping? Um, you know, what are those times of day when you feel you can get into your writing? So figure that out first. Um, once you figure out what that time is, schedule it. Be very um, deliberate about saying that is my writing time. Um, and maybe even go ahead and put it on your calendar, you know, just block it out on your Google calendar or your whatever you Apple people, <laughs> you Apple users use um, and say, okay, that's my time. I'm going to write during that time. Now you're not getting more hours out of the day, right? Still the same number of hours. But if you have time that's like, oh, I could write there, or that's when I could catch up on my housework, or I could write there, or that's when, you know, whatever it is, I could do the other stuff in life, fill in what you know tends to take your time. It means you'll have less time to write. But if that time is firmly on your calendar and you know this is your writing time and it's sacrosanct, then you get more time to write because you actually use the time that you set aside for writing. Does anybody um, do that? Do you put your writing time on your calendar? I'd love to hear if that's something that you've tried and um, whether that, that works for you. So let me know. Do you put your writing time on the calendar? Mm, all right. Um, so I said that this was kind of like three and a half slash, slash four. So the next two, you'll, you'll decide, is that one tip or is it two? Or is it one and a half tips? Um, but the next tip after you figure out like when and how you do your best writing and you actually set aside that time is come into your writing time prepared. For me, this means two really important things. The first is to set an intention about exactly what I'm going to do. Like, when, what's my intention? When I sit down for that time, I know um, my writing time is in the morning. I've got it put on my calendar. So when I go to sit down and do that writing, what will I be working on? Keeping in mind that, of course, there are all of these different steps to the writing process, right? So maybe you'll be actually writing, but maybe you'll be revising. Maybe you'll be using a revising checklist for editing. Um, maybe you'll be doing some research. Maybe you will be um, planning or outlining, um, you know, there are a lot of different things you could be doing that are in the service of writing. So before you sit down in that sacrosanct scheduled writing time, know exactly what you want to use it for. Now, I'm not promising you that that's what you'll get to use it for. I'm not promising you that your muse will come in and go, oh, actually, I've got this great idea for chapter nine, and here we go. We're going to go write it. Or that you'll start writing chapter nine and then realize you don't have enough information and you have to go back and outline or something like that. Not guaranteeing. <laughs> there are no guarantees that you'll be able to work on what you want when you want to. But I can pretty much guarantee you that if you don't know what you want to work on, you're going to use up a lot of your writing time figuring that out or sitting and, and waiting to get inspired. Um, let's see. Marina says, an outliner with writing but pants scenes. A pantser with my schedule has too many things going on. I'm presently streamlining my life. Oh, I like that idea, streamlining your life. And feeling like a pant, like you're a pantser at life is, um, I'm sure feeling a lot of people relate to kind of flying by the seat of your pants, not able to make those big plans. And of course, you know, life gets busy, that happens. And so everything I'm talking about here is 
really having the intention to do this. You know, it's not that we do it perfectly. It's that we have the intention to do it. When we have the intention to do it, it's a lot more likely to get done than if we're um, just kind of free, free floating about it. So it's a process, um, but having that intention. So speaking of that intention, this, this final piece is knowing exactly what you're going to write. So um, again, where are you in the writing process? Choosing one thing and just doing that one thing. It actually takes time and it takes energy to switch among tasks. So another way you can save yourself time with writing is just narrow, picking this thing ahead of time and narrowing it down and saying, I'm only going to do one thing. Okay, now the kind of point five or the, the separate step after that is if you are in fact drafting a new scene or a new chapter or a new blog post, if you are working on creating new content and drafting, the other key thing to do is to know exactly what you want to get out of it. And that might mean having an outline. It might mean, mean using a scene planner if you're working on a novel. Um, there's a scene planner I really like to use that um, is in Recipe for Drafting. And um, I think I also have it for free. I'll look for a link to that. I think I have it as a free download on my website. Um, so I'll, I'll put that link in the comments. But not just, oh, I'm going to write chapter nine and I'm going to stick with drafting. I'm not going to work on any part of the writing process, right? That's the first part of the intention. Second part is, wait, what the heck happens in chapter nine? Who should be there? Where is it taking place? What do I need to get out of it? And how will I know when it's finished, right? So that you are not writing blind. Now, for those of you who go, oh, I really don't like planning. Um, what if you make it work for you? What if you say, I'm just going to take a few minutes and jot down a few bullet point notes. I'm just going to um, grab what I know is the most important. And there will still be surprises, right? You're not going to map out every um, moment or every detail moment by moment necessarily. But hey, what are the most important things? What do I have to have in this chapter? You know, what is there some kind of plot development or is there something going on between my characters? Um, if you're not working on a novel, if you're working on a blog post or um, a chapter of a, a nonfiction book, same thing applies. What are the key things that I need to make sure I deliver in what I'm writing? Okay. So um, I'm, I'm going to scroll through comments now. Let me know if you have questions, and then I'll recap these four tips and um, uh, tell you how you can get a copy of Recipe for Drafting. So, um, oh, hey, J.A., good to see you. Uh, Anne says, I'm a discoverer writer. Once I realized, oh, and you realized that I'm master class with me. Oh, cool. So you discover things as they um, come up. That's a really fun way to write. And if you've given yourself these parameters, for example, using a scene planner, and you know what has to go into the scene in order to achieve its goal, then you get to play. And you're like, oh, but what if this whole conversation they need to have is actually taking place over here? And so it segues into that scene, or whatever. Um, Kate says, it sounds like it's a good idea. I get distracted from writing so easily. Um, Oh, and it sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on in your life and you're helping somebody. Um, whoa. Whoa. Kate, that's awesome. That sounds like something that needs to go in a story. This is like exciting, exciting times. But absolutely. And what I, you know, hope is obvious and what I'll just go ahead and state is that the context for all of these tips is that, of course, life does get busy. And there are so, simply times when our writing has to take a backseat and it has to pause. Um, but when you do have some time that you can use to write, my hope is you'll be able to use it more effectively and more efficiently by using these tips. Um, ooh, J.A. says, I wake pre-dawn. It's the best time. Yeah, I, I like to write when my brain is not quite awake yet. Um, and that's the other great thing about a scene planner. If I have already figured out what needs to happen, then I can be in almost a, like, meditative state as I'm writing along and I go as long as I hit these points I'm okay um, writing is like exercise best done before your brain is awake enough to go what are you trying to do um, hey Cassie good to see you all right so let me recap the the tips um, it started with find your writing profile find when you will be most productive. That includes time of day, which day, and also how long you will write for. I personally am a very slow transitioner. 
my minimum amount of time for being productive at writing is 25 minutes. Less than that, I'm not even into the thought before it's time to stop. So, you know, finding out um, your writing profile is so key. And I never, ever try to get productive writing done in less than 25 minutes now. And it's very freeing. Also, knowing I can do something productive in 25 minutes is very freeing. So find your writing profile. Um, then schedule your time and schedule it for the times you know are going to be best for you based on your writing profile and commit to them. You know, hold them very seriously. Again, you know, it's emergency and you have to, you know, somebody's going to the hospital. Of course, your writing would take a backseat. But so would your nine to five job at that point, right? So think about committing to your writing in the same way you commit to other things in life and really um, uh, holding that space for it and, and keeping it as something you really value by, by showing up for it. Um, and you feel so much better when you do. You won't be. You want to have that guilt of, oh, I didn't work on my stuff. Um, the next step was um, to set an intention and be really clear what part of the writing uh, process you're working on and just do that one thing because it takes time and energy to switch from writing to editing or editing to researching among any of them. And then the follow-on tip to that was um, plan out, if you're in the drafting stage, plan out what you need to do to be done, what you need to get through to finish um, that chapter or the blog post or whatever it is. What are the, the key elements you need to have? Um, so all of these pieces are pieces of um, the, the writing process and more specifically for me, from my point of view, the drafting process. And um, I was mentioning the um, latest book I'm working on. It's now currently with the editor. Yay! Not my responsibility right now. Okay. Um, it's Recipe for Drafting. Um, it's available for pre-order. I will share a link to that. Um, it's at meganbarnhard.com slash recipe for drafting and I'll put that in the comments. Um, but I go through in a lot more detail and talk about the draft, the writing profiles um, and try to help you find yours. And then I also take you through what I call the rough draft rules, which are principles for working more effectively by getting into this sweet spot that is not you like frantically forcing yourself to work harder and also not you going like, well, I'll just wait till I get inspired, right? Like when will that happen, right? It's this place where you know yourself really well, you use the strategies that you know work for you, but you also push yourself. So it's about finding this, what I think is a really beautiful middle ground. You're not forcing, you're not just hoping that inspiration will show up, but you're finding these tools that allow you to be effective. So that is coming out at the end of October, right in time for NaNoWriMo, for all of you who are launching into that writing challenge in November. So it's a real quick read. You'll be able to just gobble it up the weekend before NaNo and get your drafting going full year. So I will put that link in. Um, oh, some more comments. Cassie says, I use bullet points of major plot points. This way, if I have an idea that's not in my outline, um, I, I want to run with, I can evaluate after the writing session whether I can still get to the next plot point or if I need to reevaluate. That sounds like a really effective strategy. Probably doesn't take a lot of time because you're bullet pointing and you get to um, make those kinds of decisions later without having to stop. Awesome. Um, Crystal says, planning is a weak point for me. I tend to fly by the seat of my pants. Everything I'm working on and I've gotten a little bit better at. Nice. And Crystal, everybody plans in different ways. And it's so powerful to find the things that work for you and use them. Um, if you haven't already, you may want to check out Recipe for Outlining, which is the previous book in this Write Your Novel series. And it's all about how to find your outlining style. It's not how to outline the way I do it or the way anybody else do, does it. It's how to find your outlining style. And it includes a lot of brainstorming activities, coming up with ideas. So you might find that helpful. Um, all right. Oh, yay. Awesome. And you pre-ordered. Thank you. Yay. Can't wait to get that in, delivered to you. All right, y'all. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you take these uh, tips and find some more time to write and make the absolute most of your writing time so that we can all read your books. I will see you next time. Happy writing.